April 20th, 1999. In Littleton, Colorado, at Columban High School, two young men by the names of Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold open fire. So why am I talking about this today? I'm not here to talk to you about gun control, but instead, I wanna talk about the media coverage of the situation. Most of us have seen tragedies in any type of news or any type of media, <clears throat> and have seen the way that the news, co uh, news coverage has been reported. I talk about the Columbine shooting not because I remember it myself, I was about five years old at the time, but I talk about it because it's one of the times that I saw that this type of reporting and I thought it was just inappropriate. I think that the media needs to stop sensationalizing the news and just report what happened. Because when they sensationalize the news, it brings forward a lot of issues. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about three different issues. One is that it gives pain to criminals. The second is that it lowers the ethical standards of reporting. And the third is that it brings forth the problem of replicated crime or violence in this issue. The Columbine shooting is one of the perfect examples where the criminals are given out fame. Jacqueline Sh uh, Shilcrot, an assistant professor in the Department of Public Justice, says that the extensive coverage of the two perps made not only famous were not only made famous, but even in some quarters, folk heroes of a kind. Particularly the deeply alienated students. And the reason is because the way that the news reported on them, they put up articles, journals, uh, journal entries of the kids, and people started to make their own distinctions about them, had their own, started to form their own opinions. They thought that these kids were being bullied and that they were retaliating but that wasn't the case. Later they found that they were just psychopaths. But because of the extensive coverage, that story was turned to be in that manner when they shouldn't have gotten that type of fame. So then that brings forward the next thing, the next problem that I wanna talk about, <clears throat> which is ethical standards in the report in reporting lowering every day. There's something out there called attention economy, and what that is, is basically what it sounds. It's that they're trying to get our attention. They're, they, they build, their economy is based on the way that we view them. So if we're not listening, if we're not seeing, if we're not aware of what they're reporting, then they're not, they're not getting money. So they sensationalize these news so that we can watch and be reeled in. There's a saying out there that nobody really knows who coined but it emerged around in the 80s, and it says, if it bleeds, it leads. And that's why violence is at the top list, priority, in news media today. The extensive coverage of this brings me to my final uh, problem that I wanna talk about today, and that's that it brings forth the issue of replicated crime, or violence. According to researchers at Arizona State and Northeastern Illinois universities, they say that studies find that as many as 20 to 30% of uh, violent acts are triggered by other violent acts. So if we see something in the news or if people out there with uh, you know, any kind of uh, psychotic disorders um, see these type of events and the extensive coverage that is being put on them, it kind of gives them like an idea of what they should do because the coverage is so extensive, the details, are so thorough that it kind of sort of leaves a sort of template out for anybody that wants to do what they did. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but they don't really cover suicides on the news that much. And when they do, they don't go into, into depths of the suicide, how they did it, where they did it, why they did it. The reason being is because in the 80s, there was a wave of suicides that emerged because they were Covering the, um, they were covering the suicides as extensively as they do any other type of violent crime today. So the CDC and the, and the National Institute of Mental Health set forth guidelines to stop this type of um, inappropriate reporting 
so that they can reduce the so that they weren't the problem and they weren't they weren't actually uh, fueling the flames of more suicides. So what I want to say is that we don't need just guidelines for one set of type uh, one uh, one particular type of violence. We need guidelines on any type of violence so that news is reported appropriately. Some may argue that the press has the right and the obligation to feed us any type of information. And I agree with that. Freedom of press is, is uh, something that I also hold uh, to be true or, and to be right. But do we really need to know every single detail that happens in all these violent crimes? I don't think so. And I have a couple more questions as far as, as, far as that goes. And it's, um, is it worth giving fame to criminals? Is it fair to not hold accountable the, the media that, that are inappropriately reporting and gaining from it? And is it worth risking replicated violence? See, I'm not pushing for the censorship of media. Instead, I'm pushing for smarter, more ethical ways of reporting that information. If they, can, if they can give us that valuable information without sensationalizing the tragedy itself, I feel like it could really make a difference. Thank you.